Most of you MS aspirants might have wondered if your GRE score or GPA was good enough to get you into your dream universities or if lack of work experience was really going to affect your admit chances. What if you're not from an IIT or any top ranked universities in the country? Was that really going to dent your admit chances of getting into your dream university? In today's video, we're gonna do some myth busting. Find out what's really important to your admissions committee and what's not. Are you ready to find out what they are? Expert answers coming your way in 3, 2, 1. Hi there, my name is Donna David and I'm a GRE and admissions expert here at GREH. Today, I'm going to be sharing the keys to getting your dream MS admits even if your GRE score, your GPA or your work experience falls short of the university's requirements in the most legit way using profiles of actual students just like you. Let's look at a list of factors that the top 50 universities usually evaluate before deciding whom they should grant an admit. These factors include your GRE and your TOEFL or IELT scores, your CGPA, your resume, which also includes your academic credentials, work experience, internships, paper publications, etc. Your statement of purpose, your letters of recommendation, your GRE and TOEFL scores, and your CGPA along with whatever is listed in your resume constitute your academic profile. The other two are a window for the universities to find out about who you are as a person the experiences that shaped you, the reason behind applying to that very course, and finally, the testimonials of people who have worked closely with you in your LORs. So what are the two most common profile weaknesses? Well, not having a GRE score or CGPA that meets the university's requirements. So what if your GRE score is under 3 or 5 and your CGPA is under 3? Does that mean you're going to settle for less? Absolutely not. Let's now take a look at three student profiles that made the top 20 US universities. Picture perfect admits despite having not so perfect profiles. Profile 1 belongs to someone with a GRE score of 301, a GPA of 8.8 .8, and no work experience. What kind of an admit do you think this profile might have won? Go on, take a few guesses. Are you ready to find out what they are? Profile number one belongs to Arushi Patru, who is currently pursuing her MS in Electrical and Computer Science Engineering from Texas A&M University College Station, which is ranked number 12 in best engineering schools. But wait a minute, let's take a look at the average GRE scores of students at Texas A&M University. The average GRE score of students at Texas A&M College Station is 316, whereas Arushi's GRE score was a 301. Whoa, that is quite a gap. So how exactly did Arushi make it to Texas A&M University? Here's a sneak peek into all the positives that her profile has. A pretty decent GPA, a total score of 105, industrial training at on telecom infrastructure and broadband networking. She was also the student coordinator at the International Conference on Microelectronics, Electromagnetics and Telecommunication. All of the above helped ensure that the positive attributes of her profile far outweighed the negative ones. Now the most important question is, what do you do for a great admin? If you have a GRE score of around 300, step one, making your GPA work for you. If you've taken your GRE in your second or third year of college, then make sure to keep your CGPA high. Even if you've had a couple of semesters where you didn't perform that well, put in some extra effort to ensure that you improve your GPA in your third and fourth year. The universities will definitely appreciate if you've started out with a below average GPA in your first few semesters, but later you pulled up your socks and increased your GPA. Too late for that? Then here's what else you can do. Step 2. Acquiring relevant training or internships or work experience that's in line with your stream. 
In Arushi's case, both her industrial training as well as her experience as student coordinator were directly connected to her chosen MS program in electrical and computer science engineering. So what else can you do to strengthen your case? Step 3. Aim for high scores in language proficiency tests like TOEFL or IELTS. Yes, all those hours you spent binge watching friends on How Much Your Mother are finally going to pay off. Step 4. To top it off, highlight all your achievements beautifully in a creative and compelling statement of purpose and get strong glowing letters of recommendation from professors, deans or other reputed people that you've worked with closely. Remember, the more recent and credible your LORs are, the better. Your referee should preferably be a senior faculty member at your university or your superior at work. Make sure that your LORs is not more than a year old. For your best shot at scoring ambitious admits, You've got to ensure that your SOPs and LORs are of top-notch quality. Want a complete guide on effective SOP writing that will help your profile get noticed? Then we've left a link to that in the description below. Download your free complete ebook on writing a stellar statement of purpose today. Make sure to complete and send your applications early to universities when your score doesn't meet their requirements. As even if your application gets rejected, you'll still have time to apply to other universities. Moving on to our second profile now. This profile belongs to someone with a decent GRE score of 311, but with a CJPA of 6.5 and 5 backlogs. Any guesses on what admits this profile might have received? Well, prepare to be surprised. This profile belongs to Shreyas Renukundla, currently pursuing his Masters in Systems Engineering from Cornell University that's ranked 15 in the best engineering schools from the US. Shocked? Well, you needn't be. Shreyas was much more than his scores and so are you. Let's take a look at the numerous positives that Shreyas' profile had. A pretty high verbal and AWA score, a TOEFL score of 106, and here comes the real deal. A research and development internship at DRDO, final year college project on interaction, tracking, and navigation of autonomous robots. Online certification on machine learning from Stanford University. Finally, courses in 3D modeling, artificial intelligence, and machine learning using Python. Do you have a similar profile to that of Shreyas? Then here's what you can do. Step one. Work on building skills that are rare. Step 2. Aim for high scores on exams like TOEFL or IELTS. Step 3. Opt for courses or certifications that will help you in your target MS program. And finally, Step 4. Illustrate your achievements, interests and career goals clearly in your statement of purpose. Here's a quick tip on boosting your admit chances instantly. Apply to niche or highly specialized courses that have a high future scope but aren't really mainstream today. Want to know more about how to select and shortlist universities that are perfect for your profile? Then grab your copy of the Select Strategy on Smart University Shortlisting provided in the description below. After all, better selection equals better admits. Time for our third and final profile. A GRE score of 303, a TOEFL score of 80, and a GPA of 5.78, along with 13 backlogs, with some pretty interesting work experience. With his GRE and TOEFL scores, and GPA being much below the requirements of top 50 universities, most people would have thought of settling for less but not Ravindra. He went on to secure an admit from Northeastern University, ranked number 37 among the best engineering schools in the US. He's currently pursuing his master's in Management Information Systems at Northeastern. Now, let's take a look at the average GRE and TOEFL scores of students at 
Northeastern University. The average GRE score of students at Northeastern is 380. Now the average TOEFL score of students at Northeastern is 97. Now you might be wondering that with the scores that Ravindra had, how did he manage to get an admit from Northeastern? This only goes to prove that scores aren't everything and that there are multiple ways to make up for less than ideal scores and get an admit from your dream university. So what did give Ravindra's application that edge over his competition? Most of them who would have probably even had better scores than he did. Let's take a look at the work experience that he had. He joined a startup as a PHP coder where he developed a website for users to sell scrap material and other products to be recycled completely online. Now this helped him garner experience in website development and other technologies like PHP and MySQL. But that's not it. A stint at his father's newspaper distribution business gave him hands-on experience of handling company accounts and overseeing the work done by employees, all of which helped him develop skills in management and communication. Ravindra also completed a postgraduate program where he was exposed to a host of programming languages that include Core and Advanced Java, Spring, Hibernate, C++ and MySQL. If you find your GRE and GPA both falling short of your university requirements, then work on building your strengths on other aspects of your profile. Go get that certificate that you've always wanted. Take up an internship in the field of your interest or maybe even learn a new language. All of this can really add up and give your profile a boost. Don't forget to document everything you've done in your resume and your statement of purpose. And tell the university just how much you deserve that admin given your interests and career aspirations. Is it possible to chase your dream admin even if your scores don't exactly match the university's admission criteria? Yes, provided Every other aspect of your profile is fine-tuned to match what the University Admissions Committee is looking for. There are quite a few things that you need to keep in mind while planning the perfect application. Which is why I want you to get started right away. Try out our Admissions Awareness Evaluator for free to find out what you already know and what are the things that you need to be aware of. Get all the tools that you need to build a truly bulletproof university application just in time for deadlines. You can find the link to it in the description below. And that's a wrap. We hope you now know how to perfect your admissions process even with scores that aren't quite perfect. Let us know in the comments section if you have any other doubts regarding your admissions process or your GRE and TOEFL prep and we'll get back to you with solutions at the earliest. Also, comment below if there's any other video that you'd like to watch to help you with your admissions process or your GRE and TOEFL prep. Also, if you like this video, then hit that like button and subscribe to GREH Online Academy for more such videos. Hit that bell icon to be notified instantly whenever we post a new video. Until next time, this is Donna David from GREH. Apply wisely.